In the following, we cover the Chebyshev inequality. What is the Chebyshev inequality, and why do we need it, and when do we, when should we use it? Uh, at times, we are given the PDF, and we use the PDF to find the probability in a certain range, less than or greater. So, given the PDF, we can do a good job in terms of finding the probability. But at other times, all we have is the average and the variance. So imagine that your instructor in the class says that the average of a class is this and the variance is that. You don't expect him to give you the entire distribution. So you ask yourself, how many got above 90 and below 10, for example? How many got above 60 and below 40? Can we answer these questions given just the mean and the variance without having the probability? The answer is, using Chebyshev inequality, we can have a bound. So we, I cannot tell you exactly, but I can tell you to some uh, limits. So uh, all you need to give me is the mean, the variance, and epsilon here is this, is the value away from the mean. So if you if you want to find this yellowish area, the yellow part of, of the curve, the probability, then we are guaranteeing you it's going to be less than this quantity. We can also find the complement. It's going to be 1 minus that. So if you want to find the probability to be in between. And it, this equation makes sense because uh, as, as the variance, of course, increases, as the variance increases, you expect the bound to be uh, larger. The variance increases, you, you expect this quantity to be larger. So we have probabilities proportional to the variance. But of course, as you increase epsilon, the tail becomes smaller and you expect the probability to become less. So I'm just saying here that it makes sense that probability is proportional to sigma to the variance. So if you increase the variance, you expect uh, the yellowish areas to be to be larger, more. And if you decrease the variance, you expect otherwise. Similarly, for the case of epsilon, if you increase epsilon, you, you get smaller yellow area. And of course, this is why epsilon shows in the denominator. Anyhow, let's assume that this equation is given to us and we want to find the probability. We can prove this equation by uh, the definition of the variance. The variance is defined to be uh, on the left here. This is the normal definition of the variance. What we're going to do, okay, because this covers the entire area. If you just cover the area that is in yellow, of course, you expect to get less, less quantity because this is always positive area. So on the left, we have a value on the right hand we have less because the amount of area covered is going to be less and it's always positive quantity uh, now we we can tell here also that if you are in this yellowish area if you are in this region you'll always find that your epsilon is less than epsilon square will be less than this quantity squared okay so if you replace this green with epsilon you expect to have an even less less amount so we can we still have the right hand side will be less again notice focus on this limit we are only considering the area where epsilon is less than x minus x bar or epsilon squared is less than this quantity so i can replace this with epsilon and i'm guaranteeing that this is going to be smaller than the original integration but again this is nothing but the probability for x being in that limit which is given in the definition here so now we can divide both sides by epsilon and I got this probability, which is shown in this definition. Now, uh, this can be used, as I mentioned, in, if the PDF is not given, only the mean and the variance or standard deviation are given. And one alternative form for the Chebyshev inequality, as I said, the complement, if you want to find the yellow region here, it will be one minus uh, this quantity. So uh, nothing strange, but just to complete the picture. So if you take the limit as the variance becomes small, the probability becomes one, of course. You have an exact value. Let's do an example for the Chebyshev inequality. Find the probability that the random variable exceeds three sigma away from the mean. We'll start with the definition of Chebyshev inequality. But now in the question is given, we have three sigma, we'll replace epsilon with three sigma. So this will be simplify things because sigma here will cancel because we have sigma squared here. I'll get nine, one over nine. So the probability of being three standard deviations away from the mean, irrespective of the distribution, is always going to be less than one over nine. 
and this is why we sometimes use the standard deviation for the grade distribution because irrespective of the distribution we can tell the probability of student concentrated on that range what if we are not given the the standard deviation of the variance we can resort to markov inequality markov inequality give you a bond on probability give you an idea about probability without the need for the variance it's just it's just the expectation or the mean of course it will not be a tight bound but it all requires that the random variable should be non-negative x should be non-negative it should be uh, having a probability of zero for x less than zero and for a positive value of a if you want to know what's the probability of being above a certain value it's always going to be less than or equal to the mean divided by that value again we can have examples for this you can use it when all you know is the mean to prove this we need the Chernoff's inequality which is beyond the scope of our attention here so these are two inequalities for your use at least if you are given them you should be able to use them thank you